so much. Families of loved ones with autism can sometimes face some pretty unique challenges that other families don't. And there are some great resources available here in Northeast Ohio, but now there's a big push to make sure that people who help these families all come from the same walks of life. To tell us why that's so important and what's being done to advance that goal, we welcome Selena Miller and our longtime friend Autumn Ziemba. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. So, How are Selena, you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. Selena, talk about your story. Your son Elijah. Yes. It was diagnosed with autism when? Yes. So, Elijah was first diagnosed with developmental delay at 18 months. Wow. Okay. And so, we began getting services for him. And to be honest, it took many years to get an actual autism diagnosis. And the reason was is every place that we would go, every psychologist would say, well, because he can communicate, he's not autistic. However, he checked the box on everything else. Mm. And for years, it was exhausting trying to get people to believe that my child has autism. So although the schools and other services wrote him as autistic, we never had the physical paper that said he was autistic until he turned around 12 years old. So you couldn't get those services that you really needed? I couldn't get the next level of services, yes, yeah. because they will require having that documentation that says autism. And so that's, that kind of did hold us back from some things. And it was stressful. Like, and, and you want to keep fighting and you want to keep going for it, but when you're taking care of a loved one like Elijah 24 7, sometimes you have to put stuff down and come back to it. So finally, somebody heard us. Finally, somebody said, I can't believe he has not gotten a diagnosis of autism. He's, t he's obviously autistic. Mm -hmm. And we finally got that documentation. When you, um, we're trying to find resources and groups to help him communicate and mm -hmm. be with some of his peers so mm -hmm. he could maybe learn some things, peer model like that. Was it difficult? Was it challenging because yes. of some of the barriers that were there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for many years, it was just Elijah and I. Yeah. We didn't see organizations or groups or places that were like us and you know our color our culture and we literally would have to travel outside of our neighborhood in order to get services in order to communicate with other parents and families because these things were just not where we lived at and that can sometimes be challenging because although I'm grateful for the organizations that I was able to to work with that were outside of my neighborhood I didn't see people who could identify with my culture that could identify with my journey and so i still felt lonely right. i still felt by myself and my uh, autumn we talk about milestones and some of the great mm -hmm. resources they have and now there's a push to help expand some of the diversity when it comes to caregivers and also the resources that are available there is we have an upcoming training yes. you heard selena's story so imagine you're a parent the autism diagnosis is the gateway to getting all of these services imagine the strain that puts as a parent yeah. and a caregiver on you as a person of color. And there are other factors going into this as well. There could be cultural factors, economic factors. And so we're, we're holding a behavioral health care training next Wednesday. The idea is to collaborate. Therapists, social workers, counselors of color, you know, let's train them. Let's talk about how can we better reach out to caregivers like Selena? How can we better support them? How can we educate them so that they know you know, the, the differences that they bring to the table so that they feel seen when they're in these therapy yeah. sessions so that they return. Because we know statistically, many people of color don't seek out necessary mental health care. So how can we bridge that inclusion gap? And a lot of the reasons why we don't seek it is because we don't understand the importance and the value behind mental health services. Right. We may not have been taught that it's important for us, not just this, as self-care as in getting your rest, but the holistic care. So how are you seeking mental health? How are you handling your anxiety, your, seat, your sleep deprivation? How are you handling just the everyday? People don't, some people don't know to seek those types of services. And they're, they're not in our neighborhood mm -hmm. to say, hey, we're here to support you with your needs. And so it's important to be connected to community, to be connected to other parents and other organizations that can help you to see the importance. And this training is going to be great because it's important for people to know that the individual with the disability is not the only one whose life is impacted. Right. It's a whole family. Yeah. The, it's the entire yeah. family. Yeah. Well, this event is going on again. It's Wednesday. Information on the screen right now. It's from 10 a.m. to noon. It's the Milestones Behavioral Training. It's going to take place at the Renaissance Church over in Warrensville Heights. They also do a live stream so if people can't make it, yes. which is we great. We want to make this accessible to everybody. Yeah. Yes. That's our mission. So we will have virtual live stream.
-hmm. It's also going to be available on demand for a month and continuing education credits are available. Awesome. So we want to encourage as many providers of color to please you know, consider attending yes. this. Yeah. You get your CEUs yes. and you'll find out how you can better support you know, families like Selena's. That's awesome. Yep. Selena Autumn, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good thank luck with the, uh, the event on Wednesday.